Hi, this is. Hi, this is temperature. Hi, this is thirteen point two. We're dealing with vectors in general. So one concept that you've dealt with before is velocity versus speed. So when we're dealing with vectors, vectors include both the magnitude and direction. So when we talk about velocity, we need both of those things, magnitude and direction. But then when we deal with speed, then we're just talking about a scalar. And with the scalar, it's just the magnitude. And so we don't need a direction at all. So example number one says that we have a car traveling north at 60 miles per hour and a fl plane flying uh, southeast at 600 miles per hour. And then the plane is flying horizontally relative to the z direction, so there is no change in z. Use components to find the velocity of the distance between the car and the plane. Well, we really aren't going to have velocity here because there is no direction that's going to be between those two distances. So we just want to know the speed. So we're just going to be looking at the magnitude of that piece that's in between those two. And I have the picture right here to show us what we're doing. So this is in the direction of the car, 60, and then this one's 600. Notice that this purple is 10 times as long as this black one, which means that the magnitude is represented fully for the vector. So first of all, let's write some uh, vectors for the car and for the plane. So if we do that, the vector for the car, for the velocity, is going to be equal to, well, it's just going up straight up, so it's in the j direction. So it's going to be 0i plus 60j plus 0k. So that's what our vector is going to be. The car is not moving up and down. Write the one for the plane. Ooh, this might be a little bit more tricky. So if we try this one, so the velocity for the plane is going to be, now we're in a southwest direction, I'm sorry, southeast direction, so we're going to have an angle here, which is theta. So we're going to build a little triangle here and figure out the components of this, and then we can set this up. So in the so for the x component, I can use r cosine theta, which we've done many times before, but now we're in uh, vector form, so we're going to use the 600 cosine, and then this angle measurement would be 45 degrees, and then we're going to be i. Now since I'm using 45 degrees, I have to make sure that I am plus or minus correct on this, and notice that my Vec uh, my component right here is in the positive x direction, so yes, this is going to be positive. Noting here, though, in the y direction, we're going to be negative. So this would be minus 600 sine of 45 degrees in the j direction, and then we're going to be plus 0k. So here are my two vectors that I do have. Now the question is, is do I add these or subtract? If I added them, that means that one is pushing the other. But these are working independently of each other. And so I'm looking at the distance between. And when I do the distance between, it's actually going to be, and I shouldn't say the distance between because it's a velocity and speed, but it's going to be the vector that results between those uh, two points, that, the endpoints that I just had, which means that we're actually going to subtract these two to go ahead and find the magnitude to help me find the speed. So regardless for this one of my direction, I just need to find the overall magnitude. So if I simplify 600 cosine 45 degrees and 600 sine of 45 degrees, I do end up with this 300 square root of 2 because this is square root of 2 over 2, and then that's just what we get there. So if I take this value minus this value, and then I'm going to take this value here minus this value here. And then the 0 minus the 0 on the k's gives me 0k. So that's what I end up with. And if I simplify this a little bit more, just to put it in decimal form, well, I'm not even going to do that because I'm going to find then the length or the magnitude of this yellow vector that I do have here. And so this one right here, this yellow vector, is going to be 
the length is going to be the speed that I'm going to have on how fast the car is separating out from the airplane. And it better be big. So now I can go ahead and find my speed, which is the length of that yellow line, which is given by the magnitude of the difference of the two vectors. Notice it wouldn't matter if I took uh, VC minus VP or VP minus VC because when I'm doing the speed, I'm just going to be doing this 300 square root of 2 quantity squared plus 300 square root of 2 minus 60 quantity squared plus 0 quantity squared. That would give me my magnitude. And I get 559.185 and that would be miles per hour. So that would give me the speed that is the separation between the airplane and the car over that time. So some things to note here is that first of all this one is the x component so it's like our r cosine theta which we learned from before and then this one would be our y component which is r sine of theta and notice that I did put a negative here because I did use 45 degrees. When I use 45 degrees, then I know that this is in the negative direction, so I had to account for that. If I would have used negative 45 degrees, then I could have used a plus sign in there instead of a minus sign. So either way that you do it, you've got to figure out, sort it out if it's going to be positive or negative. Example number two, boat is on the river. The boat is headed due east at 10 kilometers per hour. And then a wind is moving 2 kilometers per hour in a northwest direction. I had that wrong. This is northwest. Okay, so, so here's my representation. Find the overall velocity of the boat in the resulting direction it is traveling in. So right now i got to do, I, I don't want to find, well, I, I do want to find the magnitude, but I also need the direction that it's traveling in. And then I also need the... Um, figure out am I going to add these two vectors or am I going to subtract the two? Well in this case one is working upon the other and so it is having a, an effect on the way that the boat is moving and so we're going to have to add the two. So if the wind is blowing like this in a northwest direction with a magnitude of two then my resultant vector this is where my boat's going to be going right there. And so I need to figure out the components of that and what's going on with that. So the velocity of the boat is just moving in the x direction so it's going to be 10 i plus 0 j plus 0 k. And then the velocity of the wind is going to be, now we've got to figure this out a little bit, in the x direction it's going to be 2 and well, why don't I draw this out? So this is going to be 2 times the cosine of 135 because this angle here is 135. And then this is going to be 2 sine of 135. So that's going to make this first quantity negative. And then that's going to be times i. I've got to remember to put my little vectors over the top. I always forget. And then we go plus 2 square root of 2 over 2 times j plus 0k. Because this one's going to be negative, this one's going to be positive. So my resulting vector is going to be 10 minus the square root of 2, which will just give me this, i, plus the square root of 2, which is what I got from here, j. And so then that would be my velocity vector for how I see the boat going relative to the earth. And that's what's happening. And so with this, I'm still going to the east, but then I'm getting shot up to the north a little bit. And this is dragged because the wind is working against me. I hope you can kind of see that. Now, one last thing that we might want to find is what is my angle measurement here? We can call that theta. Well, we just set up the components of this triangle right here, and so this is going to be just theta or I should say the tangent of theta, is equal to my y over my x. And so it's going to be 1.414 all over 8.58579. Then
then you can go ahead and use your inverse tangent to go ahead and find that angle. That angle is going to be in radians, 0.16325, or if I'm doing it in degrees, I'm going to end up with 9.3535 degrees, which seems to make sense that this angle right in here is about 9 degrees. And then example number 3, what goes on there, this is probably a simpler example, but this might show why we do add this. It says that we have the same boat above, which is traveling in the x direction, 10 kilometers per hour, and then the wind is traveling in the west direction at 8 kilometers per hour. And I got 0k on each one of those. If I put the vector, vector symbols over the top. So then if I add these two, I'm going to get v of b plus v of w is going to equal 2 i plus 0j plus 0k, which makes sense because I'm still going to be moving in this direction. That's my resultant vector when I add those two together, and that's going to have a magnitude of 2. And then additional items in this section, we're going to have acceleration. And it's example of a vector quantity is acceleration. And so we both have magnitude and direction. And then force is another one that we use for a vector that you'll see. Now my screen is kind of frozen on this writing, so I just got to push these things up. And now the next item is the property of vectors. And what do our vectors do? Well, we do have a commutative property of vectors. We have associative with uh, addition and multiplication. And then we have a distributive property that works. And then we also have identities. One times a vector is a, a vector, zero vector, and then we have addition, and then we also have adding a negative one times a vector means that we do end up subtracting. So those are properties that we do have. Now we're going to take vectors and move into n-dimensional spaces. Now with this, all we're doing is pretty much the same thing, except we're just adding more dimensions. And so we have alternative notation. You can put this in brackets. A lot of, uh, a lot of books also do this. They put it in these uh, corner brackets. So you might see that a little bit as well. But we can do vectors in a few different notations rather than the i, j, k. And so then if we have a string of n numbers, then we can define the vector in n dimensions as uh, vector c is equal to all these different parts, round brackets or else these kind of brackets. Addition and scalar multiplication are defined as the same. It's just you add in the like terms. So these are the first ones, these are the second ones, and so on all the way up to the last one. So you kind of add the like terms. And then we can take a scalar multiple, call it lambda, and multiply it by each one of these to get each one of these uh, new components for our vector. So here's an example. Window distributor, shop one, shop two, and shop three, so they have three different shops, list their revenue in thousands of dollars as R for revenue, 250, 321, and 450. So that's shop one, shop two, and shop three. They list their costs in thousands of dollars as vector C being 260, 180, and 200. Find their profits. So the profits is just going to be the difference of the two. So right away you can tell by just taking the subtraction of this, the profit at shop one is going to be negative 10. Ooh, that's not good. Uh, shop two is 141, and then shop three is 250. Some different considerations for this might be that shop just might be starting up for the first time, so you're going to take some losses, and it does look like their revenue, I'm sorry, their costs are much higher than the other two shops as well. So this might tell you a bunch of things. This kind of leads us into matrices that we'll do in the second semester or in the other class of linear algebra. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for listening, and then we'll talk more about this in class. Have a great day.